I'm Polly. I'm a mom, a wife, a pelvic floor physical therapist, and founder of No Kegels University. I have helped thousands of women stop leaking, enjoy intimacy, and feel proud of their bodies, even after having kids. After years of listening to women wonder why no one talks about leaking, how they should properly recover after having a baby, and that pleasurable intimacy is possible, I started to get real frustrated because I believe that no mom or woman should struggle when there are answers. It became my mission to shed light on the lack of postpartum care and the lack of discussion on issues that relate to women and their health, even if they can be uncomfortable sometimes. It also became my mission to change the conversation on women's health, the pelvic floor, and more. Here we go. Episode 31. What do I do if my leaking comes back? Three years ago, I had a patient come into my office and she was struggling with leakage. She had a hard time going to the full length of her workout classes. She quit running because she was unable to without leaking and it was just too frustrating. And the other thing that really bothered her was that when her kids wanted to play or even just race me to the car, mom, she couldn't do it because she would leak. And she said, I just got so tired of being nervous or peeing my pants for real. And you could see it through my jeans and we still had three other errands to run. She said that she just quit. She felt like she wasn't being a fun mom anymore. So we worked on her pelvic floor. We worked on strengthening her pelvic floor And we put together an entire program. And I say we because I I do get your input as to what your lifestyle is and how we can best make the program fit you specifically. So when we made this maintenance program for her, she said, oh my gosh, I'm able to do all of my workouts. In fact, I've even added an extra workout class in and I can still stay the whole time. By the time she was done and getting ready to move into maintenance mode, she said that she was able to pick up running again. And the other thing that, which I think brought me more joy than anything else, she told me with tears in her eyes, Polly, I'm the fun mom again because I can run, I can play with my kids, I can race my kids. We just get to do fun things all the time now. And as a mother myself, (laughs) that made me so joyful for her and so glad. And after we put together her maintenance program, she went off and I didn't hear from her. And interestingly enough, as sometimes this happens, she messaged me and said, oh, Polly, I'm so disappointed. My leakage has come back. I don't know what to do. And trying to help her figure out where maybe things went wrong, what could be going wrong. The first question I always ask is, well, are you doing your exercises still? Are you working on your maintenance program that we put together? And she took a little while to reply back. And she said, "Um, I'm kind of embarrassed. I forgot. And I said, that's okay. That's okay. I, I, and I told her, I said, before I go into problem solving mode, let's do this. Let's have you go back to your maintenance program. I want you to work on it for two to three weeks and then get back to me because we need to at least give those muscles an opportunity to remember what their job is supposed to do. And let's make sure that all of that is intact before we start going into problem solving mode. And she messaged me back in two weeks and said, oh, Polly, you saved the day. I can't believe that I, that it was that simple. I just needed to go back to my exercises. And I wish that I could say this is the only time that this has happened where I've helped one of my patients or clients get their pelvic floor to a place where 
They can run, jump, laugh, cough, sneeze, race with their kids, laugh without worrying about leaking or needing to bring a change of clothes or, you know, even leaving the house without wearing a panty liner or a pad. But the interesting thing is that I hear this all of the time. It's not uncommon that a year later, a t- two years later, three years later, four years later, five years later, that I'll get a message from somebody and say, my leakage is back. What do I do now? And while I don't want to come across as though I'm saying, well, if you just did what I told you to do, because let's be real, <laughs> Life happens, sometimes we forget, but really their answers most of the time have been very simple ones where they just needed to return back to the program that I created for them. And whether that's the actual exercises that we started doing in order to get them to the place where they didn't leak, where they felt strong, where they felt confident to laugh and and you know, and to participate in the full workout class or group fitness class that they were in, or even moving into um, maintenance mode. And this is, I wanted to bring this up because it's something that in my big, I call it my big, my big course because it is packed full of information and exercises, but that's one of the modules in there. And the reason that I included that in there was because number one, you're not necessarily working with me one-on-one. You don't have my brain in there helping you problem solve, but also this is such a big area that I wanted to make sure that I included that section to teach you how to be able to move into maintenance and then make sure that all that time all that effort, all that strength that you worked so hard to achieve, all you have to do is maintain it, which can seem easier said than done, but really anything is easier said than done, right? But I also really want to impress upon your mind that maintaining all the work that you've put in or maintaining what you've done thus far in life, it's so much easier in this maintenance mode than it is to go back and be in the quote unquote fixing mode. And I bring this up because if you remember in the very beginning of my episodes, when I talked to you about the creation of Beyond the V and when I decided to take and create programs online into No Kegels University, one of the promises that I made to myself was that I wasn't ever going to hold anything back and I was going to treat you like I would my sister's best friend, meaning that I would give you all the inside tips and tricks and, hey, make sure you watch out for this. This might come up or be mindful of this or I see this a lot, so make sure you don't fall you know, into that trap. I want to make sure that I'm giving you all the things to consider in this journey of, you know, obtaining a stronger pelvic floor or maintaining that pelvic floor. And really this part of maintenance seems to get missed by so many people. And I'm just as guilty of this as well, because we've all been down that road or on that road, I should say, where we have exercised and we watched what we ate and we made sure that we were eating healthy, nutritious food, our protein was high, all of these really great things. And we achieved that goal and we're, and we're so glad we did. And, you know, we're, we celebrate and, and all those things. However, if we don't maintain that, then that look or that feeling or that pant size, or that insert whatever fits you best here, that isn't going to remain. Maintenance is what you need in order to keep that pant size, feeling, physical activity level, athleticism, whatever that might be. And when I say this, I know everyone is remembering of a time that 
they were also in this too. And they might say, well, yeah, I wanted to do that just for this event, or I did it just one time to see if I could do it. And oftentimes the comment will be afterwards, well, the road to get there, it's not sustainable. I can't do that for forever. And that is where my heart breaks, that if I could go back in time and I could be your sister's best friend and say to you, dang girl, let's do it in a way that it is sustainable. So you can reach that feeling or that level of athleticism or that pant size or that insert whatever. And I'm going to lump in here too pelvic floor strengthening. So the ability to run without leaking, to laugh without leaking, to be able to do those things you want to do and not be limited by leakage or or some reason that your pelvic floor isn't allowing you to be as athletic as what you want or to move in the way that you want to. But oftentimes I'll hear from other people that have done other programs or various things and say, well, there's no way I can do hundreds of kegels a day and maintain that. There's just no way. And I'll say to them, just like if I was your sister's best friend, well, dang girl, of course that's not sustainable. Let's find you a way that is sustainable. It's reasonable. It's a program that's going to give you opportunities to be able to make sure that it is sustainable, but also give you that bang for your buck to achieve those goals that you're wanting. And sometimes I think when I say this, especially when I'm saying it to someone in front of me, whether it's on a coaching call or in my clinic, I can just tell that the person (laughs) does not believe me. And then I'll tell them, well, give me a chance and I'll show you how come along with me. I'll show you how. And so I want to ask that of you. And even if you're not ready to join one of my programs or what have you, I want you to think about this principle that going back to the basics, that is such an important principle with anything, right? Oh, I want to get healthy or, you know, maybe I fell off the wagon. Okay. Well, what's some of the the basic principles of health? water, right? That's an easy, well, I say I say easy. It doesn't cost money to go do. You, you just need to get back in that habit. And I would even say, if you're going to pick that habit back up, how can you make it sustainable? How can you allow it to be something to help you reach those goals, but still something that you can do pretty easily most days? And while you're thinking about this, okay, yes, you're in agreement with me that going back to the basics is a very important principle, but I really want to take it one step further, especially in answer to this question. Is that plan going to be sustainable from the very beginning? Just because you're willing to put in all that effort and all that time to reach that goal, is that plan still sustainable? I think with all the information and all the resources that we have now, there's a lot more ways to achieve our goals, but that plan or that program or that system can be something that allows us maybe more moderation, maybe a little more freedom, maybe a little more flexibility to allow us to get those goals where our lifestyle or our pocketbooks aren't... (laughs) It's not such such an intense uh, association or commitment. And so I want to bring that to your mind when you're choosing anything. But as this relates to leakage, this is exactly the reason, and I had hinted at this before, in my big program, Bye Bye Leakage, formerly known as Eliminate the Leakage, I have an entire module in there that teaches you how to move into maintenance mode and how to do so in a way that fits you and your lifestyle and the things that you enjoy. But one of the things that I found 
prior to even creating that course was among my patients in the clinic and among the pa- or the coaching clients that I had that I have helped online that there were all these other women that were also forgetting to do their exercises despite us putting together a maintenance mode program for them they just they wanted a little bit of accountability This is exactly why I created my group pelvic floor strengthening program called Pelvic Floor 2.0, which I recently have restructured in order to better suit suit the needs of those women and what they were wanting and what they were needing. And so there's two different tiers at two different price points where each month I've put together a pelvic floor strengthening program that will target your pelvic floor muscles directly, and it takes the guesswork out of it. All you do is either show up to the live call where I go over all the exercises and give you the things to look out for, ways to modify it, whether that's to make it harder, um, to make it easier, um, different pitfalls that might come up while you're performing these exercises because I've, I've taught these and And because I'm really good at knowing how to teach you how to do an exercise and because I've been doing this for a long time, I know some of those areas to tell you ahead of time where to take a look at areas that you might have a tough time with. And then of course that that's in the first tier. And then in the second tier, it's a little bit more specific. You have access to more resources, more classes, more videos, that type of a thing. But it's a it's a price point that most women should be able to choose from to to take that guesswork out. And again, this is something all these exercises will take you 5 to 10 minutes a day. And in the Pelvic Floor 2.0 program, this program is designed for the woman who wants to take the guesswork out of knowing what to do for her pelvic floor. And when you are, and again, I'll say it's five to 10 minutes a day. And if you're in this maintenance mode, if you will, or doing these Pelvic Floor 2.0 exercises, I'll tell you five to 10 minutes a day three to five days a week. That's all I need from you. So you, all you really need to do is, is carve out at least 30 minutes a week. You can totally do that. I know you can. And that's specifically why I created this group pelvic floor strengthening program was to take that guesswork out so that you can continue winning and you can continue cashing in on all those effort and all those exercises that you've done to get that pelvic floor to a place where you want it to be. I would love for you to join me in this group coaching program, or at least go take a look. But your homework for this episode is I want you to think about number one, where can I go back to basics in insert whatever goal that you maybe achieved or want to achieve, achieve, see where that principle can serve you. And the second thing I want you to do is go grab a week free, of course, go grab a free week of pelvic floor workouts. And these are some of the principles that I will teach you inside of pelvic floor 2.0. Remember you're an heiress and a queen and everything in between. If you enjoyed this episode or even wondered if I can help you, check the show notes for more details. And to see what else I'm up to, follow me on the socials at Beyond the V period by Polly. Because I'm changing the conversation on women's health, the pelvic floor, and more, I still need your help. Please subscribe, leave a review, and share with a friend or two. See you next week.